Yes, two. Yes, two. Okay, please, go ahead. Yeah. I think there's no question that uh, the justices have a deep desire to find out what the real truth is. Uh, there's no question that they have allowed every relevant fact to come out. Um, they have given the opposing side every opportunity to object. And I think those objections will be dealt with very quickly during the cross-examination that Mr. Arkani's lawyers will do of me. I, I'm now looking forward. We're done with the first first phase of the cross-examination. And uh, there will be a, roughly a two-week break now. And then we'll come back and Mr. Arkani's lawyer will have his chance to cross-examine me whichever way he wants. But for me, so far, it's very clear that the justices are absolutely um, adamant about getting to the truth in this matter and they've done a fantastic job of trying to get that done. So you will be available at that time. I have, I have given my commitment to the Chief Justice of the Commission that I will come back here on the 15th of March and I'll be available for a maximum of three to four days. If they can't get their cross-examination done in that time, it's it's too late. Then. You think yeah. this opportunity, what would be your appeal to Hussain Akani that uh, to ensure that he actually, you know, cooperates with the commission, that he yeah. actually turns up with what is required of him. Well, it's no longer a matter of what I think the judge, uh, the, the chief justice today, uh, passed an order, and that order was very specific. Um, it is demanding that the telephone bills now be produced, uh, that the BlackBerry handsets be produced. We went through a very technical process of trying to make sure that the commission members understand uh, how pins work, um, what's the possibilities of him having destroyed them, and you know how it all has to be brought on the record and, and, and brought to light properly. I think the order is comprehensive. Uh, it is going to compel the government to make very clear decisions about where Mr. Hakani stands and, and what it is that he did. And I, frankly, I, I tell you again what I said this morning. If Hussein Hakani had any love of the people of Pakistan, if he has any love of his country, if he has any love for truth and justice, he should just stand up and tell the people what it is that he did, and this will all be over the next minute. Mr. Ajaz, uh, there were some news in the certain media that uh, American government pressurized you yeah. not to follow this case. Do you think, do you have any pressure from any quarter from U.S. government? Yeah. And do you think that uh, Mr. Hakani is uh, getting the protection of U.S. government because he's back in USA? Uh, there's no one in the U.S. government that pressured me to do one thing or the other. Uh, my lawyers in Washington had discussions with the U.S. government about what I would say, uh, how I would say it, and which uh, configuration I would say it. Uh, and I was very open with my with my government. I made it very clear that I would not do anything that would ever compromise the national security interests of the United States. I have never done so. I have always protected the interests of my country. Uh, and nothing that I've said in the last five days that I've been on the stand has compromised American interests. I've told the truth. I've told it in as open and candid a manner as I could. And in fact, there was nothing in this case that was about compromising American interests. Okay, we have a policy of engagement with Pakistan. We want to do uh, you know, things with that country, there are important things that have to be done. But there was never any point in this whole discussion where American national interests were at risk or to be compromised. So there was nothing to, to, to work on that. Um, uh, you asked a second question, though. So but, Hussain uh, Akhani, is he getting any yeah, support from your uh, that, That's the question you have to ask, Mr. Akhani. I, I have no at, idea. At one stage, you had also uh, said a uh, little statement that uh, while this whole case goes on, you will also make some revelations about Rahman Malik, who has actually played a very you know, key part in kind of uh, yeah. scaring you off from going to Pakistan and other things. So, is there uh, anything about uh, Mr. Rahman Malik yeah. that you are going to reveal? Well, here, here, here's what I would say to Mr. Rahman Malik. Um, he is a person who casts stones at others, forgetting how many stones he has sitting in his own back pocket. And Mr. Mullock is going to hear from us uh, when all of this is done. Uh, I'm not done with him yet. That's all I'll say about that. Do you think uh, the Mr. Hakani will appear before the uh, commission again when he will be called? Because uh, there are some 
news that he will not come go back to Pakistan. Yeah, so uh, as I understand it in the order that was passed uh, just a, a 20 or 30 minutes ago, uh, he has been given the notice that is required by the court. In fact, they've given him 14 days notice instead of the four days notice that's normally required. And in that consideration, um, if he decides not to come, I think uh, you know, that will be for the courts to decide. But he's now been given the notice, so he'll, he'll, he is compelled, if he's, if he's a citizen of the country, if he's a law-abiding citizen of the country, he's been given the notice and he has to be there. One thing that, why do you have been very forthcoming and cooperative with the commission? It has been found that Mr. Khani has not been asked for coming and he has actually gone very reclusive about the whole matter. Why do you think that is the case? Well, look, there, there are two or three reasons that it could be. One is that my strategy has been to be as open and candid as possible from the very first day. Uh, that's the way I've lived my whole life. Uh, his strategy has always been to hide in the shadows on things that he doesn't want everybody to know. That's the way he's lived his whole life. So, you know, it could be just the way that he decided to do things. It could be that uh, the government of Pakistan made a decision that they don't want him to talk about anything regarding this case. It could be that uh, friends in America persuaded him that it wasn't worth trying to get involved in this. I don't know which one of those are the case, but there's one hard reality here, and that is that the truth that I had in my hands has now been put on the record. He can deny it. He then has to prove that I'm wrong. He can admit it, in which case the case is over and whatever is going to be the consequence is the consequence. Uh, or he can argue with me, and if he wants to argue with me, he's going to lose that argument. It's just that simple. I've already made that very clear to him. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care, guys.